Good evening and welcome to the February 20th, 2023 meeting of the City of Tuscaloosa Planning and Zoning Commission. This meeting allows for alternative participation in order to accommodate all citizens. Any written comments sent to staff or forwarded to this commission directly. At this time, I'd like to introduce our staff, Jimbo Woodson, Deputy City Attorney, Michael Garner, Civil Engineer, Zach Pons, Director of Planning, Caitlin Giles, Development Review Coordinator, Haley Webb, Planner, Planner and Tiana Rivas, Office Administrator. There are nine members of the Planning Commission, all of whom were appointed by the Mayor for staggered terms, with the exception of the City Council representative who is appointed by the City Council. I ask the Commission members to introduce themselves and state their occupations, starting with, let's see, Ms. Prince. Uh, Dina Prince, and I'm an attorney. Uh, Vince Dooley, UA Construction Administration. Tim Harrison, General Contractor. Ann Hornsby, attorney. Raven Howard, Councilwoman, District 2. And Bill Wright, a business owner. There are sign-up sheets outside for public comment. If you did not sign up, you will still be given an opportunity to speak. Uh, procedures. Tonight, the Commission will take up items in the order of our final agenda. The Commission will initially receive a presentation from the staff as to the details of the agenda item. Additionally, we may hear certain matters involving the same property, such as an annexation and a zoning matter concurrently, although we will take separate votes on each matter involving the same property. After the staff presentation, we'll then call upon the petitioner to present their case. At the conclusion of the petitioner's remarks, we'll then call on any other party in order of sign up or otherwise who, oppose, who desires to support the petition and thereafter will call in order those who signed up or are in opposition of the petition. When it's your turn for comments, staff will introduce you to the commission to provide your remarks. Any written comments have been included to the record, and that pertains to online. We reserve the right to limit the remarks as to those agenda items with lengthy sign-up sheets or where it continued from previous meetings. After receiving the remarks of those who oppose the petition, the petitioner will, will have the opportunity to respond to those objections. If any petitioner, if the petitioner presents any new information in, a, in response to the objections, we will allow those who oppose the opportunity to respond to the new information only. During the course of this presentation, you may be interrupted by any member of the commission for clarification or additional information. Such interruptions will not reduce your allowed time limit. Once the commission members are satisfied, they have received all relevant information, we'll then call upon to close the discussion by the public, at which time the commission members will discuss the matter and then vote. After the vote, you are free to leave. These proceedings are video recorded and broadcast live. All in-person public comments should be made at the podium into the microphone. Comments made by phone or virtually are video recorded through the conferencing application. Please first state your name and address for the record. Jurisdiction. In all matters pertaining to subdivision regulations, approval of subdivisions within the city and its planning jurisdictions, and as to amendments, plan unit developments, and located outside the city limits, this commission serves as the final authority. As to matters pertaining to historic buffer zone construction, our decision is subject to appeal to the city council. To all remaining agenda matters, including original zonings, rezonings, <coughs> plan unit developments within the city and street vacations, this commission serves as a recommending body to the city council. In that regard, our decisions are in the form of a recommendation to be presented to the City Council, and the City Council will make the final decision on those matters. Subdivision approvals requires the affirmative vote of six members of the Planning Commission. All matters which are recommendations to the City Council require a majority <coughs> vote for an affirmative recommendation. At this time, I want to ask any, uh, any members of the Commission, do we have any conflicts of interest as to any agenda matters before us tonight. If so, please state for the record. Having heard none, I would ask the staff to confirm on the record that proper notice has been given to all parties in interest as required by law as to all matters before the commission tonight. It has. Thank you. All right. 
With that, uh, we will begin with a request for continuance. Good evening, Commission. We do have one withdrawn case for the night. It's S10422, the resurvey of Camp Subdivision. And we have one case requesting to continue this evening. It's S1423, Parkway Gardens. Petitioner for those requests. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Michael McGuire with McGuire and Associates, uh, Parkway Gardens. We still got to get some information and we're working on a study uh, that we've got to get to Mr. Gardner and we haven't completed it yet, so we need to continue it for a month. Any questions for a petitioner from the commission? All right, thank you. Commission, before us, we have a continuous request for S1423 Parkway Gardens. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. All right, Commission, we do have one item on the consent agenda this evening. It's S0723B, the Charles Condominiums. It's consisting of three residential condominium units and one common area lot on approximately 0.12 acres located at 1213 Convent Street in Council District 4. Do we have any, I don't, I don't see any sign-up sheets. Is anyone, no sign-up sheets? Nope. Does anyone care to make a comment in the audience for this case? <coughs> okay, thank you. All right, Commission, before us, we have a consent agenda of S0C23B, the Charles Condominiums. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. All right, jumping into other business part one, we have an appeal pursuant to Rule 13. Longleaf Engineering is petitioning to waive the bar against reconsideration within six months and place the following previously denied petition on the March 2023 agenda. They're requesting this for the PO822 branch water PUD as well as PS9322, the branch water subdivision. Just to refresh your memory, you heard this back in October of last year. Um, it is located right next to the Cottondale Industrial Park. It was an industrial piece of land. It was a three-part um, companion case. It had a rezoning tied to it as well. You all voted to not recommend the approval. They took the rezoning to council. It was rezoned to R1, so now we have an R1 piece of property. It would like to bring that PUD back to you all and as, long, as well with the subdivision. Here's that plat, and it was 55 single-family lots. We, so the council approved the rezone. That's right. So this, this is, is now an R1 PUD. piece of property. Yes, sir. This is outside the city? Um, it is in city limits. It is in the city? It is. District 4. Five. District 4. Five. It five. is five. District 5. Five. Yep. Okay. Just for the yeah. record, what was the uh, frameworks? Yeah, framework identified this as flex employment, so this does not conform to framework. Okay. This, this is just to approve them coming back with March. That's right. Yep, this is not a vote for this PUD or the PUD subdivision. This is just to hear them next month with this case. And six months would be April? April, that's right. So, so. we just are, would be considering it on one month early? That's right. Any other questions, staff? Council, we need to just take a voice vote on that, approving. Okay. Any other comments or anyone in the audience care to speak for or against this recommendation? No one has signed up, but if you feel free to make a comment. Okay, thank you. All right, Commission, we have a appeal pursuant request to Rule 13 for PS9322 Branch Water Subdivision and P0822 Branch Water uh, for us. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. All right, this evening we've got two DROD cases for you. The first is DROD 123, CBNS Bank petitions to renovate the existing building and construct an exterior balcony at 2135 University Boulevard. This is zone PC DROD in Council District 4. Here's our aerial image and vicinity map. This is next door to where we are right now. This is the subject property today. And in their DRD narrative, they outline that they will remove the EFIS, install new brick veneer, windows, doors, and a steel balcony. They will also add a drive-through teller window on the east side of the building. 
This was heard by the Architecture Review Committee, and they found that it does meet the uh, standards and guidelines outlined in the DROD ordinance. They did identify that a right-of-way use permit will need to be obtained for the construction of the balcony. Again, this is the subject property, and now we'll move into their site plan. The building will stay mostly the same except for the two areas identified here. We've got the balcony addition and the teller window addition. Here are the proposed plans for the front of the bank. You can see that drive-through ATM on the side, the new facade, as well as the balcony and the new brick veneer. This is the back view of the building. East elevation and the west elevation. You can see the addition of some windows on this side. Here are their proposed renderings. We're happy to answer any questions if you've got them for us. Question I only had, maybe you can answer it, maybe the petitioner can. What is the uh, distance between the outer, I'm going to call them post, to the sidewalk? I mean, how much, how much, you know what I'm saying, how many feet do they have to, the pedestrian have to navigate? Yeah, we, we don't have a plan with a dimension on it, but I'll let the architect okay. answer that for you. Thank you. I see that the balcony is eight feet deep. Is that what it says? Yeah. Eight feet, yeah. Yeah. So it's basically eight feet out of what the current facade oh, the current is now. Facade, yeah. Okay. Although, can you walk through there underneath? You can Which walk way? underneath the balcony, yes. It's open. So another example we've got around town is Smart Bank. Um, just on the other side, they've got a balcony that overhangs the sidewalk that you can walk underneath as well. Any other questions for staff? Thank you. Petitioner. Jordan Morris, Fort Scott Morris Architecture, 1606 Bryant Drive. Um, staff pretty well covered what we want to do. Uh, we want to take this plain box and give it that old-timey downtown feel. Um, everyone else has, has pretty much returned these buildings to their former glory, and that's what, uh, what CBNS is wanting to do with this one. Um, the, to answer the question about the, um, the balcony and pedestrian access, uh, it would be roughly down the center of the sidewalk, long ways. Um, so you would have seven feet and change under the balcony that would be unfettered access. So they're not intending, obviously, to have a sidewalk cafe or block the sidewalk in any way underneath the balcony. Um, the only other major change to, other than removing the ethos and putting these other openings would obviously be this addition to, to get um, a drive through to work but retain as much of the parking as possible. Yeah. I, there was something about the trees that were in front. Y'all want to handle that? Work that out? We'll handle that in turn. The trees, the trees remain. But I can't see with the notes there. Yeah, the little, the little square of gray looking boxes where we can't read any. The notes above covered balcony. What is that? That would be, um, there are those two trees right there that at the time that we submitted it, it says remove. There's been subsequent discussion about that to the end of staff said that yeah. they'll address that. Yeah, well, we got it. Right. We'll, we'll address it. <laughs> yeah, you got it right. Fair enough. We're going to ask you about it next month. Okay. Uh, there a conversation about the side lighting in the drive through Can you have that? And chair, vice chair. Uh, I, we have a drive through. I guess it'll be a 24 hour ATM access yes, teller. I think there were some questions about lighting on that side just for safety purposes. At this point, um, we haven't gotten into to the site lighting design, um, but unequivocally, I've never worked with a financial institution that is not interested right. in having adequate lighting. Um, it's got to make an improvement in the area. So you're, you're reversing the flow of that parking lot. Obviously, they had that teller. Or, 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 I guess that exit would be a right turn out, right turn only. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, you could ask well, engineering about their curve, comments yeah. related to that, but it would. Is it, isn't there a median right there? Yeah. 
Yeah, the, to, today the traffic flow is opposite of, of the diagram on the screen. So there's a median cut in University Boulevard, and, and for them to reverse the flow, we're requesting that they close that median. So when you exit the bank, it will be a right out only. You'll only okay. turn right. And additionally, we shifted the, um, the addition back to allow better sight lines for egress. I still think it's going to be safer than people trying to make that left turn and hurry into that parking lot. But, okay. Any other questions for me? Any other questions for petitioner? Thank you. Anyone in the odds care to speak for or against this request? Thank you. Have you heard of the commission? Any comments or? about this petition? Okay. If not, we will take a vote. Commission before us, we have DROD 0123 CB and S Bank. Petition to rezone existing building construction and exterior balcony on the structure at 2135 University Boulevard. So BC DROD, do I have a motion and a second? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Hornsby? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Our second DROD case this evening is DROD 223, Druid City Properties petitions to renovate the existing building located at 550 Greensboro Avenue. This is also zoned BC DROD in Council District 4. Here's our aerial and vicinity. We're over on Greensboro. This is the old Insuresoft building, as most people are familiar with. Here's the property today. And the applicant is proposing to remove the decorative panels on the second floor facade along both Greensboro and 6th Street. Um, the narrative also details some minor work, including painting the remaining stucco and other finishes. The Architecture Review Committee found that this meets the standard and guidelines of the Downtown Riverfront Overlay District, um, and they noted that all signage will need to be approved separately. Again, here's our subject property. This is the uh, existing site plan, and then we'll get into the architectural details going around the building. This is looking at it from Greensboro, going all the way around the side. This is the back side of the building. Really the best view for you guys is going to be this rendering. You can see that they're removing those panels along the second floor to expose that window uh, going up two stories now. You guys have any questions for staff on this one? Thank you. Petitioner. Good evening. Richard Henry, Druid City Properties, 1901 8th Avenue. Staff covered the bulk of it, and the rendering speaks to most of it. Essentially, we're removing those. They're faux panels that hang over about four or five foot away from the existing curtain wall and they're purely I hate to call them decorative because they look so bad but they're they're just cosmetic and so we're going to remove it make the building look more approachable and then try to make the building not yellow but is it going to be pink no i mean it's a, they've <laughs> scheduled it as an off-white with like a I don't know what color green, I hate to say it green, but because it doesn't, it's not going to be like a lime green or anything, but kind of a muted color. So just try to soften it, make it blend in with the surrounding area. But glad to answer any questions. So that's how it's called. You know, those panels are on top of that right there. So yeah, so it's panels. like a, it's like a. How far off are the panels right now from that the glass? I mean, basically where you can see the flower bed, um, it's probably a five to six foot area that at some point must have been paved when the savings and loan was there because there's an old storefront opening in it that's been glassed in. So at some point they removed it and added the landscaping. Um, eventually there will be, for that ground floor user, there will be access on Greensboro, but we won't cut that in until the tenant's identified. Okay. Any questions for petitioner? 
Thank no you. one no one has signed up to speak for or against. Would anyone care to speak for or against this petition? Having heard none, uh, I think this is this was the old first federal building bank building, wasn't it? I had my first construction job there when I was a kid, so I remember when it was like this. It's, this is carrying it back to some old glory. Uh, I, I think it's great. Yeah, that's my two cents. Any other comments? All right, permission before us. We have DRO DO two twenty three Drew City Property Petition to re renovate the existing building at five fifty Greensboro Avenue. All those. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Ms. Prince. Yes. 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 Motion approved. All right, Commission, we have one companion case this evening. We have companion case A. We'll begin with the subdivision. We have SO523. This is the Benjamin Barnes YMCA, a resurvey of Block 1, Calton, and unplatted land. It's consisting of four lots on approximately 53 acres, and it's located at 3101 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and 2621 through 2623 Calton Road. This is in Council District 2. Here's the vicinity map just south of Calton Park. And here is the area that we'll be looking at this evening. Here is that plot with contours and without. So how the land sits today, it's all tied to one parcel. So we need to go in there and break it up, put it into four different lots. Zooming into lot one, there's a lot of interior lot lines that they're getting rid of. This, will, this is currently the McDonald Hughes Community Center site. And then along the right here, there's an access easement being provided to that Alabama State Board of Education property. It's kind of island, it's a little island right now, landlocked. Moving over to lots two and three, no proposals here, just leaving them as is. And proposed lot four, it's fronting Colton Road and Investigator Dornell Cousette Street. The variants for press this evening for the subdivision are sidewalks, a drainage study, as well as half street improvements. Any questions on the subdivision before we get into the rezoning? Quick question for engineering. Engineering on these variance requests? We're, we're in agreement with those. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Z0423. The city of Tuscaloosa petitions to rezone approximately 15.4 acres located at and around 3101 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard from MG and R3 to Institutional. Again, this is where we are. Looking at that lot one from that uh, subdivision that we were just at. Here's that property. Again, it's the existing McDonald Hughes site. This is also where the proposed Benjamin Barnes YMCA will go. You've got residential R3 to the west. And then you've got a Shelton State Community College branch to the south. This is due to uh, better fit the property's current use and the proposed use. So rezoning to institutional makes the most sense for this land for the uses. And again, here is that proposed plot one. This does conform to framework. Framework identified this as civic institutional. And here's that future land use character map, all surrounding area on this side of Martin Luther King Jr. fall under civic institutional or university. And then here are those institutional district regulations. Any questions for staff on this? Okay. Thank you. Petitioner. Good evening, Commission. Eric Hamner, TTL, 3516 Greensboro Avenue, representing the city. Um, staff pretty well covered anything. I'll take any questions you have. I don't have any questions. I'm just excited about this. Getting this one step closer to an exciting project. Yes. Long overdue. Yes, yes, yes. Any other questions for petitioner? Thank you. Any comments from the public for or against? No one. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner, before us, we have two cases. Uh, companion, we have S0523, the Benjamin Barnes YMCA resurvey with uh, three variants requests of sidewalk, strange study, half street improvements, engineering has no issues with. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Ms. Hornsby? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Commission, we have before us Z0423, the city of Tuscaloosa petitions to rezone 
approximately 15.4 acres located at and around 3101 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard from MG and R3 to Institutional. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Ms. Prince? Yes. 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 Motion approved. All right, jumping into our rezoning cases this evening, we have two. We'll begin with Z0523. Southeastern Investment Group, LLC, petitions to rezone approximately nine acres located south of 600 Harper Lee Drive from BGO to BH. This is in Council District 5. Here's the vicinity map. It's just in between McFarland Boulevard and Helen Keller. Here's that aerial view. You've got Baumhauer's directly north of here, as well as a hotel. And here is that property. So we're looking at everything right here. And then to the north, there's Hampton Inn. This is to allow for a recreational facility and or a future hotel and complimentary developments. The proposed buildings or construction would be a golf putting course with a casual dining restaurant and other amenities. Again, here is that property. This does conform to framework. Framework identifies us as campus services. And with the uses that fall within campus services, it's quite broad. So with the knowledge that we have of what this development could be, we feel it forms with framework. Then here's that future land use character map. All of it showing to be campus services. Here are the permitted uses within BH. And I'm going to go a little bit quicker through this because what we're gonna focus on are the special exception uses. What they're proposing could be a miniature golf course or other outdoor amusement, and that is a special exception. So they're currently on the agenda for the Zoning Board of Adjustment a week from today to ask for that special exception. Any questions for staff on this? Nope. Petitioner. Good evening, Commission. I'm Jimmy Duncan with Duncan Coker Associates here tonight representing Southeastern Investment Group. Uh, Haley pretty much covered everything. I'll attempt to answer any questions you have. Now, the only reason this is before us is because of the special exception. No. This is the rezoning. It's the rezoning. I mean, this is the rezoning. Yeah. But there's, the zoning includes things like gas stations? It, it, it would, yes. Um, it's pretty broad, the BH, re, the BH zoning district. There is some BH located in this property just south, um, or just south of this property as well. So that's why they're, or sorry, just north of this property, um, which is why they're requesting the rezone to be Both the Hampton Inn and Baumhauer's are to zone BH. Right. I just, there's not a plan for this right now though, right? No, ma'am, not yet. And I'm assuming you couldn't get a special exception in BGO for this. That's correct. It's not allowed in any zoning district. Oh, okay. Any by right. Okay. Right. Hmm. Any more questions for petitioner? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone care to make comment for or against this petition request? Thank you. Any comments from the commission about this? If not, I'll take a you know, Most. that's a lot of property to, to be rezoned BH. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, look, I mean, I'm not against. It just kind of leaves. I wish we had a little bit more specificity to what's going to go there. But what can what light can y'all shed on that? I mean, I would say that the highest and best use of this property is not a gas station. That's the way it's here. Like this property, this property <laughs> said. This property's had numerous uh, people looking at it, and I'm pretty sure something special is going to go on. Okay. Okay. I trust you. Okay. That's what I needed to hear. There you go. Uh, yeah, I agree. Okay. Commission. Of course, we have a rezone request of Z0523 Southeastern Investment Group requesting to rezone nine acres located south of 600 Harper Lee Drive from BGO to BH. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Ms. Hornsby. Yes. 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 Motion approved. Yes. 
All right, next rezoning request we have is Z0623. Davy Bishop petitions to rezone approximately 1.15 acres located at 1717 18th Place and 1805 Queen City Avenue from R3 to BN. This is in Council District 2. Here's that vicinity map. It's just south of 15th Street. And here's an aerial view of the property. So it'll be two parcels that we're looking at. And here is a drone photo of that property. Then to the north, you've got residential. And then to the west, you've got active industrial. This is to allow for the use of a trade business. There's an existing metal shop on site. And again, here's that property. Now, framework identified this as traditional neighborhood core, so that kind of goes, you know, not informed with what this rezoning petition is. However, also in framework, we are working to move residential away from industrial uses, especially active industrial uses. So here's that future land use map. And here are all the permitted uses within BN. Do you have any questions for staff? So the, the pink mm -hmm. is limited commercial? I can't, I can't tell from the Yes, ma'am. Yep. OK. And okay. so this use would likely fall within limited commercial or corridor commercial. The, the wide area there, that's the train. That's right. Track. I mean, in reality, that probably should have been tied in with that limited commercial. I mean, I don't think the possibility of that going to traditional neighborhood core is highly likely. Yeah. Right, and it's right along the railroad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll show you that image yeah. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's an existing business where the tin roof is. Is that just a prior non conforming use or something? Or? So it's not existing today. They would like to use it oh, okay. for a business. You, you meant just the building is existing. That's right. Okay. Yep. The building is existing. The business is not. Okay. Looks like it's fenced in right now, isn't it? Or it looks like it. Parts it is. Parts of it are dilapidated. But okay. Any more questions for staff? Petitioner. Good evening, Commissioner. My name is David Bishop on behalf of Control Climate 1717 18 place. Any comments to the Commission for the request? Oh, I thought y'all wanted me to come up. No. You, you, you want to get where you can rezone and do business, right? I do. <laughs> and you bought it? I did. I, I purchased it thinking it was already commercial. Mm -hmm. And I want to operate, I want to grow an uh, air conditioning company. Because it was commercial. It was there a commercial use there before you bought it? it he was while operating a lawn service there. Okay. So you so used to assume that it was. I assumed it was already commercial. So you went to get your business license, they said. And when I got, yes, sir, I went to get business license. It's like, no. It's a little surprised, weren't you? That was a bad yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> while you're uh, here. Looks like you spent some money and you got a couple of dumpsters out there you're cleaning up. Or something. I did. Okay. I did. I did. You see all the dumpsters there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice. good to see the area cleaned up. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Good. Have you had any conversation with the neighbors? I have they had any concerns? Um, I have. They didn't seem to have any concerns on turning it commercial. There's three empty lots on the other side there. They're already commercial. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the area. What about uh what would be your hours of operation? Yeah. Would it be a Monday through Friday, Monday through five Friday. type of yes sir. Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 5.30. Yep. Okay. And it's just somewhere to house HVAC equipment, um, utility vans. Okay. Maybe a metal shop or something in the future. Just growing an air conditioning company. I understand. Nice. Any more questions for petitioner? Thank you. Anyone care to speak for or against this petition request? Having heard none, commission, we have before us Z0623, Mr. Bishop petitioned to rezone 1.15 acres located at 1717 18th Place and 1805 Queen City Avenue from R3 to BN. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Prince? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Congratulations. Do you have a card? <laughs> <laughs> you got two? Always in need of an HVAC <laughs> bring, bring, man. Bring a handful. 
Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, three about three. <laughs> I'll find it. Mm -hmm. All right, moving into our preliminary plots of the evening, we'll start with SO623. We've got 6410 and 6420 Watermelon Road. This is consisting of one lot on approximately 1.84 acres located at 6410 and 6420 Watermelon Road. This is not in city limits. Here's the vicinity map just across from Sokol Park. Um, you've got the venue just south of here. Also, the tree farm nursery is south of here as well. And here's an aerial view of the property. It's currently two lots. They'd like to go to one. Here's that plot with contours. And without, you can see the dotted line to be removed just next to where it's bolded saying lot one. This is a concept plan. They would like to remove that existing building and put two more storage units. There's currently one on site, so they would like to have a total of three. And they're requesting a variance from sidewalks this evening. Any questions for staff? Engineering on the sidewalk variance request? I think that request is appropriate for this location. Thank you. Petitioner. Chairman, members of the commission, Al Cabinets with Cabinets Engineering representing Gary Phillips through Pier 3 LLC. Um, the existing building is actually built by someone else about 10 years ago, and Gary has purchased it and then has now purchased a old single family home there next door. This is in the county, so he plans to combine this into one lot and try to do just one access there so we don't clutter up the street with lots of drives. Security will be a little better for it as well. So, uh, cl climate controlled, uh, you know, walk in, walk in storage, just like the ones next door. How visible are those facades, front facing Watermelon Road, be visible from the road? They, they, they will. That's that's uh, only we have anything that shows topography, but the the southernmost building there is pretty much up on a knoll. We'll be in a good bit of cut. Uh, you can probably see a retaining wall there on the. Um, on the plan, so we're probably in six or eight feet of cut for that southernmost building, um, which gets it pretty much at paving level. Be a, we should have the building have a slight berm there, but nothing to hide the building. Well, we know it's in the county, so we really can't put any kind of building requirements on. We were just talking to chair, vice chair, about how you know metal building. Yeah, on Watermelon Road, it'd be nice to have some type of brick facade on it or something just to kind of pretty it up, you might say. Yeah. Um, or some trees. Or, some or trees, trees yeah. It, it, yeah, trees would probably be easier to, for me to work my way through. Uh, we'll have a little room that we could do that. It it will not be as prominent as the building next door just due to topography, but I, I understand the concern. Yeah. It's not a concern, it's just a matter of taste and how it would look. A lot of people travel that road. It's, uh, yeah, there's a good bit of traffic right there, yeah. Um, so you're not going to commit to brick tonight, are you? <laughs> yeah, I don't see me selling brick on that. <laughs> any uh, more questions or any more comments? It would, it would so it, it will be fenced. I could see the opportunity for me to get some landscape work into it. I'm okay. glad to do that. I think the residents in the area, 406, should probably appreciate yep. that. Yeah. But we know he's in the county. Any other questions for petitioner? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in the audience care to speak for or against this petition request? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Oh, excuse me. David Pruitt, 12739 Country Lane, North Fort. Uh, my concerns are I'm, my property line is right there with the back side of it, and uh, I just went and prefer more storage buildings to be on basically three sides of any commercial property because that would make it down the hill from me to the side of my yard and then another commercial property to the left. Uh, and then also, you know, the lights at nighttime that would be shining through two of our windows, two of our bedroom windows, uh, the people come and going all times of day and night and, you know, disturbing us, dogs, everything. And then besides that is the traffic. Like you said, there's a well-trafficked road. Right there is the top of the hill where the driveway pool is in. 
people fly over that hill all the time. I've almost gotten hit multiple times turning out on country lane, and that road would be right there at the top of that hill, so there would be probably plenty of accidents, I'm sure. Uh, we'll ask the petitioner to maybe address some of your concerns. And we'll, here, just so you know, it yes, in the county, yes, uh, which yeah. you can do a lot of things in the county you might not want. So yeah, sometimes yeah. it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. Exactly. Just yeah. so you know. So I, I think your concerns are heard, and we'll ask the petitioner to maybe address a couple of those okay. for you. Uh -huh. And if he brings anything up new, you can obviously work with the, you know, okay. the petitioner. I think they're both reasonable. I can respect okay. Mr. Cabinets. I know the owner of this property. I think they'll be the nice right. thing about it. If Mr. Phillips had owns uh, Premier, he should be able to handle lighting pretty nicely. So, anyway, any more comments from you? That's, that's it. Mr. Cabins, you want to uh, make any on the record responses to those uh, concerns? Yeah, I can. And this, um, we got a view a little bit further out. I can, I can, some of those things I'm positive will address. No. Yeah, that's probably good. So, um, this is pretty much the high point here. So, we're in probably the retainer wall joining his property. We're probably in six or seven feet of cut there. So, we'll actually be below him with a concrete block wall. And a you're, you're dropping the elevation. We're the dropping the elevation on the other okay. side. So, that's, that will help too in terms of that. Uh, one of the reasons we're, we're trying to maintain this existing entrance and, and come through this way, uh, you got a good bit of traffic here, you got an intersection here, so we're, we were trying to avoid having another intersecting street right here. So that's our reason for combining the lots, putting it all together, and maintaining that one entrance. Makes security a little better for us, and I say just, just for the nature of meeting grade requirements, I've, I've got to be in a lot of cut right up here. And uh, his, his house actually begins to fall off that way. The, the terrain slopes this way and this way. And did you say that this would be an interior? Yes, these are interior. These are not so the there won't be the, the sliding of the doors. Yeah, and the, the cars won't be loading, unloading. You basically got to exit your vehicle, walk inside. These, okay. these are internally loaded. So all the Loading yeah. the unload will be They're done not, inside uh, the building. There are some down there on the other side. That are the, the smaller ones down there. Uh, that row has exterior doors. Yeah. But these that we're building up here will be uh, interior final controls. Uh, but he's welcome to reach out to me and we'll and, try and to lighting? Get it. Lighting concern? Uh, there, there, there will be some lighting and... Um, we could certainly make that downward where it's not interfering with, with his home. And the cut will keep automobile tra lights from. Yeah, we're at those retainers. I don't think they're over. They're not over eight, but they're in the six to seven foot range that we're actually lowering the side. So it won't be headlights. Retainers. Yeah, the headlights will be in the concrete Locked. block wall. Yeah. So that, would it be a twenty-four hour access keypad type? Yeah, thing? there would be keypad twenty-four hour access. There would be that. So potentially somebody could go in and. Yeah, I mean, so, somebody could be there any hour. It, uh, you know, the noise would tend to bounce back towards Watermelon Road. It's, you, you've got a concrete block wall and an embankment behind him before we roll over to his house there. Okay. I think you hit the points that he was bringing up. So. Any other Thank questions you. for petitioner? I just encourage you guys to get together and I think you, you're working with some reasonable men here so I think you'll find an accommodation. Any other comments for or against this petition request? Okay. Having heard none, Commission, uh, before us we have S0623, the 6410 and 6420 Watermelon Road. Uh, one, one variance request of sidewalks and engineering has some issues with. Do I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Ms. Hornsby? Yes. 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 Motion approved.
All right, next case we have S0723A. This is the Charles Condominiums, a resurvey of parts lot three, four, and five, block 86, Tuscaloosa Coal, Iron, and Land Company. It's consisting of one lot on approximately 0.12 acres located at 1213 Convent Street. This is in Council District 4. This was that condominium subdivision that was on the consent agenda at the beginning of the night. Again, here's where we're located, just north of 15th Street near UA and the property. There are two interior lot lines that run through this lot, so this is just to remove them. Running here and here. And then there's one variance request for the evening tied to this, and it's for sidewalks. Engineering. We're in agreement with that request. Fisher. Mr. Chairman, the members of the Commission, Al Cabin, this was Cabinet's engineer representing Hampton Callahan. Uh, Hampton's purchased this property and has, has completely redone them. They really do look nice. They're, this, this building was probably built early 70s, maybe late 60s. Actually, there's a almost identical building to the south that a couple of y'all were on the Planning Commission when we converted it to condominiums about 10 years ago. So, uh, But it's a little three-unit, three two-bedroom townhouse. Um, that um, it, obviously you had the condominium hearing earlier, so that's he's selling them um, being two bedrooms, uh, most likely game day, but I mean, or whatever somebody buys them for. But, um, they're um, he, he just for some reason that original plant, the lots ran north and south. The construction happened east and west, so this lot, the lot to the north, and the lot to the south all cross those same three lots. But anyway, other than that, no other improvements outside. And the sidewalk um, variance is just nowhere for sidewalk to cross this property or north to south. So unless there's any questions, that's about all there is to that one. Any questions for petitioner? Thank you. Thanks. Anyone in the audience care to speak for or against? Having heard none, commission before us, we have S0723A, Charles Condominiums, with one side wall variance request. The engineering has no issues with. So we'll have a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Prince. Yes. 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 Motion approved. All right, next case, we have S0823. This is the DMR subdivision. It's consisting of two lots on approximately 2.32 acres located east of 832 Maplewood Drive and south of 8240 Highway 69 South. This is not in city limits. Here's the vicinity map. Uh, Hillcrest Middle School is just to the east of here. And here's an aerial overview. So on our screen, we see two lots, but they are identified currently as one. They're tied to one parcel ID. So they are here to just Go ahead and split those completely to give them their own identification. Here's that plot with contours and without. So the lots are remaining. It's just to plat them. And they are requesting a variance from Cap Sewer as well as sidewalks. And they received a letter from the county as well as ALDOT saying that they will not be requiring them. So I guess our engineering has no issues with them either. No issues. Thank you. Petitioner. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Bobby Herndon, 2728 Little Lane Wallace Boulevard, Northport. As was stated, uh, this is one piece of property on the tax maps that's connected by a fee hook, uh, and the street separates them as it is. We would request a favorable recommendation on this. Fair enough request, I assume. Any questions for the petitioner? Anyone in the audience care to speak for or against this? request. Okay. Commission before us, we have S0823 DMR subdivision with two variance request cap sewer sidewalks, which we have uh, no issues with from our engineering department, and the county doesn't either. So do I have a motion and a second? So moved. moved. Second. Ms. Hornsby. Yes. 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 Motion approved.
All right, next case, we have S0923, the Jack Rigsby subdivision, consisting of four lots on approximately 29.37 acres, located at and around 16359 Highway 69 North, and this is not in city limits. Here's the vicinity map. It's near the Tierce Patton and 69 North intersection. Here's an aerial view of the property. Now we're going to shift it counterclockwise while we look at this plat. This is the plat with contours and without, so now north is going that way. There's currently an existing mobile home and a storage shed on lot one, and this is a four lot subdivision, the largest lot being lot four on the southern side of 69 north at about 12 acres. They're requesting variances from cap sewer, sidewalks, half street improvements, drainage study, as well as right of way dedication. Engineering. We're okay with those requests. Thank you, Petitioner. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Bobby Hernan again. This is right up at uh, Tierce Patton Road on Highway 69, the new Dollar General up there. So it's a, it's a long way up. Uh, it'll be four large lots, and we would, again, request a favorable recommendation on that. Bobby, why you got just my nosiness, why do you have a shared driveway easement between two lots of 420 foot of the um, is that driveway on the line currently with the driveway on the line currently. to uh, cut out on the access it's as far as coming out on 69 meaning okay commission makes sense okay. any one of the audience care speak for or against having heard none commission before we have s0923 the jack rigsby subdivision uh there were some variance requests i don't see them on the screen yet come on caitlin <laughs> Cap sewer, sidewalks, half street improvements, drainage study, and right away dedication. Engineering has some issues with. Do I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. A second? Second. Thank you. Mr. Prince. Yes. 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 Motion approved. All right. All right. Next up, we've got S1023, Grammar Division, plat number one. It's consisting of two lots on approximately 18.96 acres, located at 12693 Lonnie Scott Road. This is not in city limits. We're going pretty far north up near Samantha. We're in between, I've forgotten the road now, but Highway 43 North is up there. <laughs> Again, that old Fayette Road. That's what we're between. That's where we are. Here's the aerial image of that property. Here is the plot with contours and without. So we're going from one to two. The first plot does have an existing residence on it. And then the second lot will be a little over 14 acres, almost 15. There's an existing easement running through. And the variance requests are for capped sewer, public street frontage, because Lonnie Scott Road is a prescriptive right of way. Um, They're also requesting half street improvements, a drainage study, a right of way dedication, and lot configuration. And lot configuration is for that lot too. They've got that tail coming down to touch Lonnie Scott. Okay. Engineering? We're okay with those requests. Anyone? Uh, petitioner. Get ahead mm -hmm. of the game. Good evening. Jamie Autry, 1470 North Bank Parkway. I'm here on behalf of Ms. Diane Grammer, who inherited this property years ago. Uh, she'd like to split this property because lot number one is not her primary residence, and she'd just like to sell that and retain lot two with no plans of development or anything like that. Any questions for petitioner? Thank you. Anyone care to speak for or against? Having heard none, commission for us, we have S1023, Grammar Division, plat number one. We have Six variance requests, cap sewer, public street frontage, half street improvements, train study, right away dedication, and lot configuration. Engineering has no issues accept. with. Sorry? I move that we accept. Okay. Second. A second. Second. Okay, Ms. Hornsby? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Right. Next up, we have S1123, Hilltop Estates Number 3, a resurvey of lots 60 and 61, Hilltop Estates Number 2. This is a reconfiguration of two residential lots on approximately 4.3 acres located northeast of 11176 Hilltop Loop, and this is not in city limits. Here's the vicinity map. It's off of Tears Patton, and here's an aerial view. 
here's that plot with contours and without. Again, this is two lots, remaining two lots. We're just shifting that lot line back to the aerial image. It will be close to where these bushes are, somewhere in that area. And they're requesting variances from capped sewer, half street improvements, as well as sidewalks. Engineering. We're in agreement. Thank you, petitioner. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Marty Montgomery, Montgomery and Hinkle Land Survey, 203 Harville Road East, Tuscaloosa. I represent the Pattersons in this, or Patterson Equity in this uh, subdivision. Uh, it's four acres. It's remaining two lots. They just want to move that line away from the house so they can sell it. We still have a, a lot left. Thank you. Any questions for petitioner? Anyone in the audience care to speak for or against? Having heard none. Commission for us, we have S1123 Hilltop Estates uh, with three variants request cap sewer, half street improvement sidewalk. Engineering has no issues with. Have a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Ms. Prince. Yes. 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 Motion approved. Right. Next, we have S1223, the Duncanville subdivision. This is a resurvey of lot 2R, resurvey of lot 1R, R, and R. I think I got all of them. Subdivision <coughs> and unplatted land. This is consisting of five lots on approximately 27.7 acres, and it's located south of the Monticello Drive and Highway 82 East intersection. This is not in city limits. Here's the vicinity map and aerial. It's right across from Maxwell Elementary. Here's the plot with contours and without. So again, this is a five lot subdivision. There is an existing right of way that they're in the process of vacating. It's located right here. The largest lot will be 13.5 acres and the smallest is 1.3. They're requesting variances from capped sewer, drainage study, as well as sidewalks. Engineering. Uh, those requests are appropriate for this location. Petitioner. Chairman and member of the commission, I'm Gary Cobb of Blackwater Survey in 949 Pembroke Lane, Tuscaloosa. Here representing Tuscaloosa County tonight, and they would like to get this approved where they can go forth. They are awaiting some grant approvals and some of the uses that these lots are going to be used for. Lot 5 would be additional parking for the school, and there's also grants for a storm shelter and another volunteer fire station. So five will have parking. Did I hear that correctly? Lot five will be for some additional parking? <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, part of lot five. Part, part of, of lot probably five. Probably more usually. towards Monticello Road? Sir. Towards Monticello Road? Yes, sir. Any questions for the petitioner? Thank you. Anyone care to speak for or against? <clears throat> Having heard none, Commission before us have S1123 Hilltop Estates. Three variance requests, cap sewer drainage state sidewalks, engineering has no issues with. Have a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Ms. Hornsby. Yes. 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 Motion approved. All right. Last subdivision case of the evening, we have S1323. This is the resurvey of lot 66 and 67 Telmar subdivision. It's consisting of one residential lot on approximately two acres, and it's located at 11008 Telmar Drive. This is not in city limits. Here's the vicinity map. We are off of 69 North. Here's an aerial overview. And here's that plot. So we're going from two lots to one, creating one bigger lot, which will be about two acres. And they're requesting cap sewer, half street improvements, as well as right of way dedication. Engineering. We're in agreement. Petitioner. Ron Henderson with Tuscaloosa Engineering Associates, 6300 Clements Foley Road, Northport. I'm here representing Mr. Tullidge. Owns he is that's his primary residence on the south lot. He has no plans to do anything else with the lot. He just wants to combine them. That's it. Fair enough. Thank you. 
Any questions? I don't think there are. Uh, anyone care to speak for or against? Commission, of course, have S1223, Duncanville Subdivision. We have three variants requests. Cap Sewer, Half Street Improvements, Right Away Dedication. Do uh, engineering has some issues with? Do we have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Uh, Ms. Horn. Yes. 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 Motion approved. All right, real quick. Uh, we are going to vote on the amendments to the rules of transaction of business. So, uh, a couple of um, changes that we're proposing for you guys that we're going to shift into all commissions, hopefully, uh, in the near future, HPC and Can I go on the record real quick before you get too far in that? I think I worded it incorrectly that we were approving S1323. Oh. My oh. bad. So, for the record, we good? I think we got Sorry it. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. All right. So, conduct of hearing. So, um, we are proposing for consent agenda items, um, if there's only a variance for sewer laterals, so cap sewer variants, because a lot of times we just see cap sewer variances and nothing else, and y'all have to vote on those, but they can be thrown on consent agenda with this update. And then there's a lot here in red, but uh, to summarize, um, we are proposing that the petitioner themselves is limited, are limited to 10 minutes. Um, all other public speakers are limited to five minutes, however, which is more than three minutes that we allow currently. However, we would maximize four speakers for each issue, so in support and in opposition. Um, so for instance, Hillcrest Gardens, if the whole community came out in opposition, as we saw, they would have to say, hey, let's get one person or a couple people to, to actually speak, because typically we hear the same thing over and right. over. Um, but it's important for them to be able to voice their opinion, of course. Um, and then the commission can vote to extend the time if needed. Um, and then petitioner can respond, but their limit is the two minutes. So those are the um, those are the updates we're proposing for the bylaws. Do you have any questions on this? Would there, is there a um, accommodation in case we wanted to allow additional people to speak? Yes, um, it, I believe it's written in there as well, and I'll That's definitely make sure. Yeah, of that. I'm trying to, trying to find it. Um, Limited to four speakers, unless the presiding officer. Yes. So or the yeah. commission decide to allow. And them. we changed it to a vote instead of just allowing them to continue to speak. So that way, it's okay. like a, hey, you know, your time is up. Do you all want to allow it? And, and we'll jump in on the. So it, the, the no one commissioner could allow somebody to go on another exactly. ten minutes as a vote of the. Commission. It would have to be a vote. I like it. And, and yeah. the four and the four max again. You said that's only on um, groups that come in together collective. Yeah, and I you're mean, gonna so identify in those, any case. You're gonna, you're so gonna, tonight we saw that there weren't, we never hit four, right. you know, but on the times that we do hit four, uh, like Hillcrest Gardens, um, we got to kind of figure that out as staff to best to best make that work for the petition or for the um, people in opposition or support. So how are you going to identify them? You know, like if there are multiple. My yeah. question is how you notify them. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's a bigger. Yeah. Because yeah, what if they don't yeah. come so as we're going to update Correct. our that's, flyers. That's, we're going to update the flyers that we send out. So we're going to. Um, update our emails and everything that we send out as well. But yeah, I think it is going to be a little bit of yeah. um, learning curve right. to figure out what's the best way. So maybe in the next couple of months as we implement this, be a little bit more lenient. Right. And, um, and that's, that's why I think we, I wanted the flexibility in yeah. there. If somebody Correct. shows up Correct. and doesn't, isn't aware of Correct. Wow. Zach, the, you have a sign-in sheet and it may have 15, 20. Are you going to limit it to four out there? Or? The goal is to do that. Yes. Just like have one through four on the signing. Sign well, we would probably if we saw that we would kind of identify them up front. Identify them at first, you know, at the beginning, or as we see people come in, talk to them and say, "Hey, what case are you here for?" and kind of get that in the front front end of things. And often those are neighborhoods that have homeowners associated. Exactly, mm -hmm. a lot of they, them already they've know already each other. Mm -hmm. kind so, of put their, all their so issues that's out really, there. That's really the goal yeah. of this is for that. You know, representative to mm -hmm. really speak. For we don't the, need to hear from every person uh, who's worried about traffic. Don't, don't, right. don't you guys get a pretty good feel early on? Definitely. Communication emails yeah. from somebody that uh, probably they probably identify as a we HOA know president or something. Where when a lot of people are going to show up and when so, a lot of people are not going to show yeah. up. I guess my thing when I said earlier is that we need to make a concerted effort to really before they get here, definitely be reaching out and saying, "Listen, we're going to limit the." Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You know, because if they get here and they, they don't know that, you know what's going to hit the fan? They're going to be like, I can't speak, why not? This so they 100%. So they're going to yeah. double our security. Especially after they turn yeah. out. They can, they can come meeting. in prepared. Yeah. Yeah. They can, they can yeah. come in prepared with their four speakers before they get here. Maybe you know. something we can implement on the council. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, the mayor yeah. Has or in the in the notice to neighbors. <laughs> Sorry. In the notices that go out. Yeah. To so neighbors. we'll update yeah. those notices yeah. as well. We'll update our website. We'll update all that stuff. But again, a lot of people won't necessarily read the fine print. I think it's a good change. I think it communication is, is the yeah. key. I, mean, I'm, yeah. I can only hear so much about Bambi and Thumper and, and the traffic. I mean, it's the same. Yeah. I think this is a ruse to cut out our overtime pay. Yeah, really. We get overtime pay? I was counting on that overtime pay, too. And mine, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, do we, do we need to vote on that or anything, or just kind of you can run with it? I think, is it a voice vote? All right. If there's, 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 there's a no, then we'll have to take a voice Okay. All those in favor of those recommended changes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Very nice. <laughs> Meetings adjourned. Okie dokie. Okay.